definition of a function, what, what, if, what it actually means when we um, refer to data or to in, an input output situation as a function, right? It has a very, very specific meaning in mathematics and we can't call all these sorts of relationships functions. So this is something that you would have first heard back in grade 10, which is the first time that you would have done functions properly. Can anybody tell me what you understand by the meaning of the word function? What does it mean to you? Oh, function the room of graphs. The room of graphs and what has it done? please, please mute unless you're talking to me. Please. All the other graphs. A, a graph, yes, absolutely, absolutely, 100%. That's fine. Perfect. It's a graph. Okay, so functions are graphs. They certainly are. What else do we understand functions to be? Please, can you mute? Yeah, I also can't hear. Please, can you mute? Hold on a second, guys. Let me just find this person and see if I can mute them. Sorry, teacher Lee, I muted everyone because I couldn't find. So please unmute. No, that's time. that's fine. That's fine. Thank you so much for helping me out with that. I really appreciate it. Okay, so a function can be a relation, absolutely. Okay, so it's a relationship. All right, and as far as a relation or a relationship is concerned in maths, we study two different types of relations. All right, so we study one-to-one -one relations. And we study many-to-one relations. Mm. Okay, so those are the different types of relations. So the relationship, please, can you mute? Thank you. So the relationship that we study is the relationship between what? What are we looking at specifically when it comes to graph? It's a relationship between, that's it. Okay, graphs are absolutely no bucle. Graphs can be exponential, hyperbola, parabolas, lejoso, lesojo. You've said a relationship between X and Y where X is one Y value, absolutely. So when we are talking about a relation, we are talking about a relation between an input, which we refer to mathematically as an X, and an output, which we refer to in maths as a y. Okay, so absolutely, all right. And if we were to take this information, these inputs and outputs, and put them together as coordinate pairs and plot them on a graph, on a Cartesian plane, that's where the graph comes from. So the graphs are a diagram representing the relationship between the inputs and the outputs. Specifically speaking, though, if something is going to be a function, it has a very specific mathematical relationship. So what they say here, this is formally, all right, and I'm going to explain to you what this means. A function is a rule by me, by means of which each element of the domain is associated with one, only one element of the range, all right? So now that brings more words for us that we need to discuss. So let's just clarify that first of all. When we say the word domain, what are we referring to specifically? What is the domain? You can put it in the chat. If you unmute and you want to speak, that's perfect. Please just mute yourself again afterwards so that we can all hear. Um, sorry, I, I have taken them the power away from them unmuting. Oh, okay. the yeah. All right. Sorry, no, that's guys. fine. No problem. Non, no problem. Um, I think Nonsasa has her hand up if you want to. There we go. There we go. You're all putting it into the chat, into the chat, which is perfect. So the set of all X values. Yes, Tato, I quite agree. So your domain is your set of X values. So in other words, your 
input values. Okay, lovely. And we see another word here that we learned about in grade 10, which is the word range. What does the word range mean, Matrix? Again, you can pop it into the chat. What is your range? Absolutely, guys. Okay, so a lot of nice answers coming through there. It is your Y values. Okay, so it is your set of Y values. Okay, those are also called your outputs. Now let's just go back and clarify this. By means of which one, each element, so each value of the domain is associated with only one element of the range. So in other words, in order for it to be a function, all right, we can only have one X being shared between two Ys or one X with another Y. So for example, if we have a look at this first situation, all right, here are our inputs. So minus two, four, five, and three are our inputs. Our output values, because remember whenever we write a coordinate pair, we write the X first and we write the Y second. So here, what we are seeing, okay, is minus two goes with one, four goes with six, five goes with seven, and three goes with nine. So that means that each element of the range, sorry, each element of the domain, here is our domain, is associated with only one element of the range. If this is the case, then we would say that the relation is a one-to-one -one function. Okay, so that means there is one e input with one output. Okay, so some examples of graphs that are one-to-one -one functions. Can you give me some examples of one-to-one -one functions? So for example, what functions that we know are one-to-one -one functions? So you're welcome to pop it into the chat. Which functions are one-to-one -one functions where there's one X for one Y? Absolutely straight lines, so linear function, quite right. Lovely, so we've got the linear function. What other functions? Not the parabola, not the parabola. Hyperbola, yes, the hyperbola. is a one-to-one -one function. Exponential, quite right, the exponential function, good. And there's one more that we study. And if you've done this section, you would know that it's the inverse of the exponential function. It is the logarithmic function. Okay, so your logarithmic function is also a one-to-one -one function. So each element of the domain is associated with only one element of the range. Okay, now let's have a look at a situation where two different elements of the domain are sharing the same element in the range. So here again, our x's are first, our y's are second. So if we have a look, right, here we've got zero, and we've got one, but they both share the same output. The output here is four, and the output over there is four. So in other words, they are sharing an output value. So what we would say here is that this relation is a many to one function, right? The reason why it's still a function, however, is because each X value still associates with only one Y, which is important, okay? In order for it to be a function, each X value may not associate, sorry, each Y value may not associate with more than one X. So some examples of some many to one functions, right? The one you would know, that is the many to one function. Anybody have an idea? That's it, Amatle, the parabola, quite right. So the parabola. And the other one that you're going to study later this year, there we go. Well done. I'm not going to try and um, say your name. Oh, yeah, I can't. I'm sorry, my apologies. I can't pronounce that. Okay, but the cubic function is quite right. Okay, well done. Honey. Very, very nice. We can just call you Honey. 
Like Kane, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a little bit easier. Yeah, that's a little bit easier. <laughs> My apologies for not being able to say that. All right, now let's have a look at something that is not a function. All right, so in this situation over here, this is not a function. All right, and we're going to have a look closely at why this is. All right, and the reason that this is not a function is because we have an X here and we have an X here, and they're sharing two different Ys. Here we've got one, and here we've got six. Okay, so this is not a mathematical function. It is not okay for our domain to have, or should I say, it's, it's not okay for the range to be associated with more than two, or so two elements of the range to be associated with the same element of the domain. Okay, so what we would call this is we would call it a relation. It is not a function. And we would say that it is a one to many relation. Okay, but it is not a function relationship. So hopefully we can see the difference between these two. I'll just go up again. All right, so that you can see both on the screen at the same time. Okay, so a many to one function means that two different elements of the domain can be associated with one element of the range. But if we have a situation where we have uh, two different elements of the range being associated with the same element of the domain, it is no longer a function. It is now a one to many relationship. OK, so hopefully everybody can see the difference between those. OK, Sharon, not a problem. I'll go up again. You don't forget to take screenshots along the way. There you go. Is that up enough? I'll just go up one more time, just in case you want to take a screenshot there as well. Okay, and then let's go back down here. Okay, the other thing that we need to be aware of are our vertical and horizontal line tests. Okay, so just very briefly, all right, when we are talking about a vertical line test, it is a test on a graph to see whether it is a function or not. Right. So the, the rule is, is that the ruler is only allowed to cut the curve or the line in one place. All right. So if the ruler only ever cuts the curve in one place, as the ruler moves from left to right across the graph, then it means that that graph is a function. OK, very important when it comes to the vertical line test. And I'm going to show you how we do that now. Our horizontal line test is not there to determine whether it is a function or not. It is there to determine whether the graph is a one-to-one -one or a one-to-many function. Okay, so the rule is this. If the ruler only ever cuts the curve in one place, as the ruler moves horizontally up or down across the graph, then it is a one-to-one -one function. If the ruler and cuts the graph in more than one place, then the graph is not a one-to-one -one function, but rather a many-to-one -one function. So let me demonstrate what I mean with this, with a line, okay? So here is a, a pink line that I want to use to demonstrate um, what it is that I'm talking about. What I'm gonna do, oopsie daisy, not what I meant to do. Um, what I'm going to do is first do the vertical line. So let me grab a vertical line here. Um, okay, there we go. So all we want is a vertical line and let's make it a brighter color. Let's make it pink. Come on, line. All right, it's not behaving itself. Okay, so pink, there we go. Let's do another one. That's a bit better. Okay, and then what we can do is we can get rid of that line. Okay, so here is our vertical line. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my vertical line and I'm going to put it over here, okay? Now, can you see that the vertical line is only cutting the black graph line in one place? Okay, so it doesn't matter where I move it to, it only ever cuts it in one place. 
So if I move it to the right or I move it to the left, it doesn't matter, it only cuts it in one place. Similarly, if I do that with a parabola, can you see with my vertical line, let's just move our horizontal one out the way, yeah? Can you see my vertical line is only cutting the graph in one place? So as I move from left to right, I'm only ever cutting in one place. That means it's going to be a function. So let's go and have a look at an example like this, a circle. What's happening here? Is it only cutting the circle in one place? Okay, it's not. Okay, it's cutting it in two places. Absolutely. So it's cutting it in more than one place. So the vertical line is cutting the circle in more than one place. So can a circle be a function? All right, a circle is not a function. No, absolutely. A circle cannot be a function because it fails the vertical line test. All right, now let's go and have a look at our horizontal line. Our horizontal line is there to determine whether it was a one-to-one -one function or a many-to-one function. So again, as we drag our ruler over our graph, if it only cuts in one place, it is a one-to-one -one function. If I grab my ruler and I move it over here, now it's cutting in two places, over here and over here. So because it cuts in more than one place, cuts in two places, this means it is a many-to-one function. No, Siddhartha Crochet, you won't be asked to do this, but it's important that you understand this as your background information to be able to do the section. But no, they will never ever ask you to perform a, a horizontal or vertical line test in an exam. Yes, William, you've got a question? Go for it. Um, hi, ma'am. I just wanted hi, to. Hi, William. Uh, ma'am, I just wanted to ask. Um, in the test, if they ask you if uh, the graph that's given is a function or not, are you allowed to use uh, the vertical or horizontal line test as a reason? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So if they say to you, is it a function, then you can say yes or no, based on whether it passes or fails the vertical line test, absolutely. Absolutely. So you may find what your teachers may do is that if they give you a little class test or if they give you, um, you know, sort of internal test of any type, then they could ask you a question like this. But if you're doing sort of national tests, national exams um, or SBA tasks or something like that, that sort of formal, formal task, they probably wouldn't ask you to do this. OK. Thank you, ma'am. All right. No problem. All right, so <clears throat> if we have a look at these, we're going to determine whether they are functions or not. I've shown you what I mean, and then we have to say whether it is a one-to-one -one function. So as far as C is concerned, what do you guys think? Do you think that that's a function? Does it pass the vertical line test? Is C a function? Yes, I quite agree. It is a function, okay, because it passes the vertical line test. Is it a one-to-one -one function? Is it a one-to-one -one function? Okay, quite right. Okay, it's not a one-to-one -one function, okay, because it's cutting vertically, it's being cut twice. Okay, so it's not a one-to-one -one function. Um, I see there was another hand up. Sam Kelo, you're welcome to ask. No, you put your hand down. Okay, that's fine. All right, what about this line over here? There's a little graph over there. Is that a function? Is this a function? So if we do this, what do you guys think? Is it a function? Yes, lovely. It's a function. Brilliant. Let's grab our horizontal line. Is it a many to one function? Is it a many to one function? No. Brilliant. Okay, good. All right. And then, of course, here with our circle, our circle, yes, it's one to one, quite right. Our circle fails the vertical line test. 
So it is most very definitely not a function. All right, now let's have a look at the graph of G. What sort of graph is that? What do we call one of those? What sort of graph is the graph of G? Lovely, that's right, Fahin. It is a parabola. It is a hyperbola. Good job, everybody. Okay, so now I'm moving my vertical line over like this, and it's past my vertical line test. What now if I do this? Okay, now I'm doing my horizontal line test. Okay, so what can we say about our hyperbola? It's very definitely a function, and it's also a one-to-one -one or many-to-one. One to one. Good. Well, well done. Well done, my people. Yes, fantastic. Very nice. Well done, everybody. That's absolutely brilliant. Now, what would we say? Let's have a look at H now. What would we say about H? Okay. Is H a function? Let's grab this. Is H a function? No, quite right. H is not a function. Okay, so vertical lines are not functions, okay, because they fail the vertical line test. Okay, absolutely. All right, so <clears throat> what if, what if we had a horizontal line? Okay, like this. So in other words, let's use, let's use black, since that's the color we've, let's just do that again. Okay, so now I'm making another line over here. Okay, there it is. And where it cuts the, come on, pen, where it cuts the y axis, that is a two. Sorry, my mouse is giving me issues here. There we go. At two over there. Is the horizontal line, is it a function? Yes, Samkelo, quite right. Okay, so your horizontal line is a function. Good job. Okay, it certainly is a function. Okay, so vertical lines are not functions. Remember, their gradient is undefined. They also, they can only be defined in terms of X. They can't be defined in terms of Y but our horizontal line is a function. Very nice, well done everybody. That's absolutely brilliant. Okay, so now what they get us to do is they just want us to do a couple of these and they want us to say whether it's a function or not, um, whether it's one-to-one, -one, many-to-one, but also to write down the domain and the range. And the reason why they want us to write down the domain and the range is because we get asked lots of questions about domain and range when we do inverse functions, okay? So we don't have to do all of them. Let's just do, let's just do a couple. So I'm just gonna hop around, all right? Let's start at B, okay? So <clears throat> let's take um, people. Can, can, Yolanda, can we unmute someone? Can we unmute people? Is that all right? Yes, that's really fine. Lovely, I'll, really I'll love to. Them as they, okay. Yeah, as they raise their hand. Yes. All right. Okay. So let's do it like that. So who wants to do B for us, please? So you have to say whether it's a function or not. If it is a function, whether it's one to one, many to one, and then you have to give us the domain and the range. Awesome. I see. Is it Lysander? Do you have your hand up first, Lysander? Go for it, Lysander. Hi, ma'am. Hi there. How are you? I'm good. And how are you, ma'am? I'm fine. Thank you. We're doing B, right? B, yes. Um, B is a function and it's a one-to-one -one function. Well done. Whoopsie. That's also um, the range. Okay, lovely. And now what would you say about the domain and the range? The domain is X is an element of real numbers. X is an element of the real numbers. Okay, so X is an element of the real numbers. And what would you say about the range? It's why it's an element of real numbers. Absolutely. Okay, so now I want you to tell me, when you say that X is an element of the real numbers, what does that mean? It means that X starts at negative infinity 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And it goes through every single number on the number line. Excellent. Well done, Lucinda. That was a fantastic answer. Brilliant. Okay. <clears throat> Let's have a look. Who wants to do uh, C first? Question C. Who's got their hand up to do question C? Is it you, Fahin? Let's just change your name. I'm sure that's you. You're welcome to unmute. Uh, so no, yeah, there we go. Looks like a parabola. It is a parabola. It's a parabola, absolutely. So if it's a parabola, that means it has to be a? Function. Absolutely, what sort of function? What sort of relation? Concave. Okay, so it has to be a many to one. Sorry, sorry, that's all right. No, don't say sorry. It's absolutely fine. We all make mistakes. All right, so it's a many to one function. Can you tell me what the domain is? Do you know what the domain is, Fahin? Uh, Fahid, I'm going to ask you to unmute again because you muted yourself. There we go. And the domain, I think, is zero. Okay. So your domain is your set of X values. So in other words, your parabola keeps going wider and wider in both directions, all right, to negative infinity and positive infinity. So here we would say that X is an element of the real numbers. Okay. Now, as far as our range is concerned... Yep, quite right, lady. X is an element of the real numbers. What would we say about our, <clears throat> our range? Fahim, do you know? Okay, let's see who else has got a hand up here. Um, Tibelo. Tibelo. There we go. Oh. Hello, Tibelo. How are you? I'm good, ma'am and you? I'm fine, thank you. Tabelo, can you please tell us what the range of this many to one function is? The range is y is an element of 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 the one is an element of what is it again? <laughs> oh, so you mean you're saying from negative infinity to positive infinity? I wanted to say but the y is greater than or is equals to zero. That's it. Okay, very nice. Well oh, done. Man. Okay, good okay. job. Okay, so y is greater than or equal to zero. Very nice. Okay, good job. Well done, everybody. You guys have obviously done this at school. Yes, definitely. Um, Hone, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, Cylindra Kushle, let's just have a look at your question. Would it be why is an element of the real numbers except zero? No. Okay. Now, there are situations where we would exclude zero, um, but these are the graphs that have asymptotes. So here, absolutely, you could still say why is an element of the real numbers? Y has to be greater than or equal to zero. Your other option, of course, is to write it just how... Um, Hone did it. All right. So here, what you would have to do is this. You'd have to use brackets. So we would say y is an element of the smaller number has to go on the left. So zero is smaller than positive infinity and it is included. So we would have to use a square bracket, semicolon, positive infinity, and then a round bracket. Okay, so they, those are our two options of being able to write that. Okay, so at some schools, you may be taught how to do it this way, where they teach you to use um, <clears throat> interval notation. And at other schools, they might teach you to write it like this, which we call set builder notation. Both are acceptable and both are correct. Yes, remember round bracket is different from a square bracket. Absolutely. Okay, good job. Well done, everybody. This is going really, really well. Okay, let's have a look at <clears throat> another one. Uh, let's do E next. Who would like to do E for us? Anybody want to do E? You can do this, my people. There we go. Go for it, Tabelo. Go for it. 
Okay, um, I'm not sure, but I can try. Go for it. So E is um, a parabola. Mm -hmm. It is a many to one. Lovely, function. lovely. And the um, domain is X is an element of real numbers. Beautiful. Wow. Then, why is an element of real numbers, but why is uh, less than zero? Very, very close. Very, very close. But why has to be less than or equal to negative one? Oh, okay, negative there we go. And negative one. Okay, so that's our maximum in this case. All right. Very nice, Tabelo. Thank you so much. It's so lovely to hear your voice. Tina says F is not a function. Yes, Tina, you are quite right. F is not a function. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, nice, guys. You're doing so well at this. All right. I'm really enjoying this with you as well. Okay, let's have a look. And what about H, Tina? Is H a function? Is H a function? No, quite right. Absolutely. Yes, H is not a function. It's a circle. All right. Who would like to try G? Who would like to try G? Do you have a question or do you want to try G for us? You're welcome to unmute, Zekho Ma'am, I wanted to ask a question. Sure, go for it. Is, is F an inverse? Is F an inverse? Yes, F, F is an inverse. So F would be the reflection of the graph of C, okay, over the line Y equals X. So, so F is the inverse of C. What you see there in C, this F is the inverse of that. But in order for F to be a function, we would have to restrict the domain on C so that the domain on F is also restricted. Okay, and we're going to talk a lot about that in our coming lessons. All right, remember we've got six lessons on this, so I'm going to spend some time talking about the inverse of a many-to-one function and how we would have to restrict the domain, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so I can see there are a few yeah. hands that are up. Great pleasure, no problem. Okay, some Kelo. Are you going to do G for us, some Kelo? Yes, ma'am. Beautiful. Go for it. Good to hear your voice. Um, <laughs> um, so G is a function because it passes the vertical line test. Mm -hmm. And it is a to one function. Beautiful. And the, and the domain. Is yes. X is an element of real numbers. Mm -hmm. Um. And the range is y is an element of real numbers and also y is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Now, this is a bit of a nasty one, Sam Kelo, what we've actually done to you over here. All right. You're quite right. In both cases, X is an element of the real numbers and Y is an element of the real numbers. But there are restrictions on both. OK, so in other words, when we have a look at our domain, OK, can you see that it's not going forever and ever in these directions? If you have a look at our parabola up here, for example, that's got arrows on it. It keeps going to negative infinity and to positive infinity, whereas this one stops. It doesn't get any smaller than minus two and it doesn't get any bigger than two. So what we would actually say in this situation over here is that whilst X is an element of the real numbers, X is not smaller than negative two, and it's not bigger than two. Okay, so we would actually write it like that. Or the other way, if you wanted to write it, maybe this, this way is better for you guys. Um, <clears throat> the way that you would write this is that X is greater than or equal to negative two, but smaller than or equal to two. Okay, yes, that's it. Okay, but Khone, you've got to use square brackets because they include both, quite right. Okay, negative two and two are included. As far as Y is concerned, 
all right? There's a restriction on that as well, because Y doesn't get any bigger than two. What is it not smaller than? Y doesn't get bigger than two, but what is the smallest value of Y that we see in this particular function? What's the smallest value of Y? Does anybody know? Lucinda? Yes, good, Sharon. Good, Tabelo. Yes, good, Khane. Yes, yes, Prosper. Perfect. Yeah, that's it, Fahim. Zero. Yes, 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 yes. So now, again, we're going to have to use either set builder notation or interval notation to write this. So if we use our set builder notation, we would say that y in this case has to be greater than or equal to zero, but smaller than or equal to two. Okay, so here they have restricted both the domain and the range in this particular case. All right. Okay, well Fahim, done. well done, everybody. That's so awesome. So lovely to hear all your voices. Okay, Fahim, do you want to do I? Sorry. Sorry, Yulinda. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just saying that they might want to take screenshots of the answers. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah. And everyone, because of my network, I'm gonna I'm gonna give everyone permission to uh, unmute themselves without me helping. Let's see if we're gonna behave. Hey, my people, I'm watching. <laughs> so you can unmute by yourself, Fahim, if you have a question. Okay, Fahim, would you like to do I? Fahim, would you like to do I? Fahim, you just have to unmute on your side. So just click the button to unmute. Then you can talk. Because right now you are muted. I'm not sure if Fahim is there, but Lusanda is there. Okay, Lusanda, go for it. Do you want to do I for us? I wonder if that's my setting, but I don't think so. Lusanda, you can unmute. Oh, oh. Because Fahim says she also can't unmute. Ah, really? That's, yeah. That's very strange. Okay. Now, I now, uh, Fahim. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I am. I'm there back, yeah. you go. Oh, brilliant. Okay, Fahim, go um, for it. Letter I is an exponential graph. It is. One, uh, one to one function, I think. Yes, I so it's a one-to-one -one function. X element of real numbers. I'm not sure, but I think it's X is element of real numbers. Yes, lovely. And Good job. Y is also not the element of real numbers. I'm okay. So it's an Okay, that's fine. Okay, so here what we would say is that Y is greater than zero. Okay, because this oh, okay. graph... Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> there we go. Well done, Fahim. Lovely. So now the question is, how come in I, I'm saying that Y is greater than zero? But over here, I said Y is greater than or equal to zero. What's the difference? Why am I including zero in question C, but excluding zero in question I? That's it, Amatle. Okay. <clears throat> right, so I don't know if the rest of you have seen that in the chat, but Amatle says yes, that's right, in Tombling Zentle, that's it. Oh, yeah, so the line y equals zero is your asymptote. So here the line y equals zero is an asymptote, and your function is not allowed to touch the asymptote, absolutely. All right. Tato, you are allowed to do that. We don't, when we use the infinity symbols, we generally don't use them in set builder notation. So we don't generally write something like X is greater than negative in infinity, but smaller than positive infinity. That, that's not the usual thing, but we do do this. So X is an element of, and then negative infinity, a positive infinity like that. Okay, and when you use the infinity symbol, it's got to be a round bracket, not a square bracket. Okay, because you can't include infinity. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Lovely. Anybody know what graph J is? Sure. So that's what you're looking at, Tabelo. 
Okay, it's a cubic function, absolutely. And you you guys are going to study the cubic function in detail this year when you do calculus. All right, so if we go and grab, oh, I just suppose I could have just drawn my own, but if we go and grab <clears throat> a vertical line and we just have a quick look at this, all right, let's draw a come on, you silly thing. Let's draw a vertical line over there. All right, so this is a cubic function and we can see that it, sorry, my ruler's doing weird things again. We can see that when we grab hold of our vertical line and we pull it over, we can see that it passes the vertical line test. Okay, so we know that it's definitely a function. If we draw a horizontal line, okay, and we drag this down, it's not passing the horizontal line test. So that's why we said in the very beginning that a cubic function is a function, but it is a many to one function. Right, so here we would refer to this as a many to one function. You guys know that it is a many to one function. As far as our x's are concerned, it continues getting bigger this way and it continues getting bigger this way. So here we would say x is an element of the real numbers, or if you wanted to say x is an element of negative infinity to positive infinity, this would be a place where we could do that, All right? And as far as our domain is concerned, it's also, it's going up forever and it's going down forever. All right, so here we would say that y is an element of the real numbers, or similarly, y is an element from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, so there's no <clears throat> restriction on that per se. Absolutely, cubic function. There we go. Okay, so what I thought we could do now that we finished talking about is it a function, I just wanted to do a little bit of revision of functions with you before we jump in and start talking about inverse functions. <clears throat> These sorts of functions that I'm giving you, like in question number five, are so, so very important for us. We are going to be asked questions on our grade 11 functions, and our teachers at school are not going to teach us this information again. So we need to know this. So that's why I wanted to use this opportunity to go through this. Right? First of all, who can tell me if we've been given a graph f of x equals minus 1 over x minus 1, what sort of graph is it? What sort of function is it? Hyperbola. Lovely, Fahin. Quite right. It is a hyperbola. Okay. The fact that this number at the top over here is negative, what does that mean for us? So we know it's a hyperbola. Yeah, Asymptote, I think. That was Not positive. an. No, <laughs> you, you're, 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 you're on the right track because hyperbolas do have asymptotes, but the number at the top does not tell us anything about the asymptotes. Okay, to, I beg your pardon, Fahim? Is it not the y-intercept or the, the q? No, it's not. No, that's um, fine. Is it, is it the gradient? Ma'am, Ma it's the, the gradient. Age. No, That's it's not the gradient, okay, because the gradient, the gradient changes on a hyperbola depending where you are, all right, so sometimes the gradient mm -hmm. is shallower, sometimes it's a little bit steeper, so we can't have a constant to describe the relationship. If we have a look, some of the people in our chat are saying, uh, <clears throat> is saying it's it's on the second and fourth quadrant yes that's correct the graph is negative which means it's sketched in the second and the fourth quadrants fourth quadrants facing down a is equal to negative one yes absolutely okay so what's really important and i'm so glad that we're going through this is that the sign of this number at the top remember our hyperbola is written in the form f of x equals a over x plus p plus q, all right? So whoever said that this is the value of a and that a is equal to negative one, that was 100% correct. So when a is negative, so if a is smaller than zero, it means that the graph is sketched in quadrants two and four. 
If A is a positive number, so if A is greater than zero, then the graph is sketched in quadrants one and three. Now that's really important for us, especially if they ask us to sketch the function. We need to know which uh, quadrants we are going to be working in. So this is very, very important. <clears throat> What are they implying by the question, what is the value of Q? What are they implying by the information given that the value of Q is? That's it, lovely. So Q is equal to zero, absolutely. Now, I know they haven't asked us for this, but if I asked you guys for the range of this particular function, what would you tell me? No, actually, sorry, 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 don't even stress about that. Sorry, I'm thinking about an exponential function. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Q is equal to zero. What are they implying is the value of P? What's P equal to? That's it, Tabelo. Okay, P is equal to one. Quite right, guys. Okay, so this graph here, yes, this graph here has been shifted one unit to the left or to the right. Has it been shifted to the left or to the right? So was he. Good job. Okay, good. Nabuti, good na lady. Yes, Linda Kufe. Yes, Lisejo. Quite right, Sarah. Sure, you guys are brilliant, hey? I think you guys need to start teaching these with Toby lessons. <laughs> very, very nice, everybody. That is absolutely super. Okay, very important that we know what all of these bits and pieces mean. Okay, so now they want us to write down the domain. Who's gonna tell us what the domain is of this particular function? What is the domain? Remember, you can raise your hand and unmute yourself. Perfect. What is the domain? We love hearing your voices. So anybody want to unmute and give it a go? Okay, you guys are putting it in the chat rather. Okay, no problem. Okay, so Honey, you've said X is an element of the real numbers, as has Amashle, Nabuhle, Nalwazi, Naledi. Yes, you are quite right. X is an element of the real numbers. Okay. Is there a restriction on that? or is X is an element of the real numbers sufficient? So Faber says negative one to infinity. Does anybody have anything else to say? Is it just X is an element of the real numbers? There we go, there we go. Okay, so X cannot be equal to P. Okay, so X cannot be equal to one. All right. So if we want to get this one mark, and this is from an end of year metric exam, this particular question, in order to get that one mark, we have to then state here that X may not be equal to one. Okay. X cannot be equal to one. All right. Because we're not allowed to touch our asymptotes. All right. So in this case here, to state both of those things, we would end up with one mark, very nice. Now they want us to write down the asymptotes of F, right? When they ask us to write down the asymptotes of F, right? If they say the equations of the asymptotes, right? Um, then they're very strict, right? But I want you to do it the right way in any event. When they want us to, to write down the asymptotes, I want us to write them in equation form. So either Y equals or X equals. So what are the equations of the asymptotes? In this case. There we go, Favor. Lovely. Okay, so the vertical asymptote is the line x equals 1. The horizontal line is the line y equals zero okay because the graph has been shifted one unit to the right but it has not been shifted up or down very nice good job everybody so here we're going to get one mark on each of these <clears throat> okay now they ask us to sketch the graph 
Okay, clearly showing all intercepts with axes and any asymptotes. All right, so now I need your help. We need to find an X intercept and a Y intercept if they exist. All right, am I going to be looking <clears throat> for an X intercept? That's it, well done. Yes, everybody's got the right answers in the chat. Okay, is it possible for this graph to have an X intercept? So if I wanted to solve for X, okay, all right. So how would I solve for the X intercept? What would be my rule? If I wanted to solve for X, what's the, the rule for finding the X intercept? Absolutely. So I'm going to make Y equal to zero. Beautiful. So if I have got, so I'm just going to write here, this is 5.3. I'm going to say zero equals negative one over X minus one. Now what's going to happen here? right? I'm going to cross multiply. So if I've now got zero times x minus one equals negative one, I'm asking you again, is it possible for there to be an x intercept? Is it possible for me to solve for x? Look at what's happening. No, absolutely. Okay, because I'm going to end up with zero x. And look here, if I did this, I would end up with zero equals negative one. Can zero be equal to negative one? Absolutely not. Okay, so this graph has no x intercept. All right, there is no x intercept. All right, now how did I know that before I even started sketching? How did I know that there was not going to be an x intercept? How did I know that there could not be an X intercept? Nonsasa, go for it. Unmute. Ma'am, I actually wanted to ask a question. Oh, uh, okay. Yes, I actually wanted to ask a question based on the asymptotes. I'm very bad at this. So I wanted to know how you identify your asymptotes because you've already given us that x is equal to one and y is equal to zero okay and maybe maybe the other classmates will be able to assist me and you also absolutely not a problem okay so when you go and you look at your equation all right in the form f of x equals a over x plus p plus q this value over here, your Q value, the line Y equals Q is your horizontal asymptote. Okay, so whatever your um, horizontal asymptote is, okay, Y equals Q will be the equation of the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so, and it's the same thing with P, but, 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 we have to change the sign of P. All right, so now if I want to know what my vertical asymptote is, I am looking at this number over here, but I need to change the sign. All right, so in other words, I have shifted this graph one unit to the right-hand side. So another way of looking at it is like this. If you take X minus one and you make it equal to zero and then you solve for X, that line over there, that's the equation of your horizontal asymptote. Okay, so it's the values of P and Q that are your asymptotes, but P has to change sign. Okay, because when it's X minus P, the graph has been shifted to the right. When it's X plus P, the graph has been shifted to the left. If it was just X on its own, and they're implying that the value of P is equal to zero, then it means that the graph has not been shifted left or right. It means that the Y axis, the line X equals zero, is still your vertical asymptote. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you, ma'am. Thank you okay. so much. 
All right, brilliant. Okay, so there's no x-intercept, but there is going to be a y-intercept in this case. So if we find our y-intercept by letting x be equal to zero, we would say y is equal to negative one over zero minus one. So that gives us negative one over negative one. So therefore y would be equal to one. Now let's draw our axes very quickly. We've got a couple of minutes left. Unfortunately, our time always goes by so fast. I so we wish we... Oh, we need to do the poll as well. All right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I will be two seconds and then this graph will be drawn because I'm not going to worry about question 5.4 at this stage. So there we go. There are our X and Y axes. Okay, here is our y-axis, here is our x-axis. If we have an asymptote, the very, very first thing that we draw is our asymptote. So I'm going to put in my vertical asymptote, which is supposed to be a straight line, and I'm going to label it that as the line x equals 1. I know from what we've said earlier that this graph has to be sketched in quadrants 1 and 4. Okay, so the graph is going to do that. Over here, this point is one, so that's zero and one like that. And then this needs to be a mirror image, okay, in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so that's what it would look like. Okay, the marks that they're gonna give you here, the three marks here, all right, are going to be, first of all, for the shape, second of all, for your asymptote, and then the last mark is going to be for your y-intercept. Okay. All right. You run the poll. I'm going to love and leave everybody. And Thank we will you. see you guys again next time. Um, yes, Dikaledi, the asymptote can be negative. The graph can be shifted down. So absolutely, it can be It can be negative. Uh, Selinda Kutle? No. No, Selinda Kutle, you don't have to add that onto the graph. Okay, so just what I've done there, okay, is would be what you would need ma to do. Hi, ma'am. Hi, Omoholo. Ma'am, I was asking if, can you give another example like homeworks, main homeworks, because I'm not, I'm only doing online classes because I'm writing at June. So I was asking for more questions I should do at home. Okay, do you want, That's do fine. you want, Um, I don't have a question on a hyperbola, but I've got a question on a parabola. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, there you go. Um, so take a screenshot of that. Let me just move this over a little bit. Oh, hang on a second. Let me just make that a bit smaller and move it. Let's keep voting while we edit my people. Vote, 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 vote. Let me do that. Okay, so take a screenshot there and then I'll move it up. <clears throat> and then we can do another screenshot. Okay, so let's just move this over a little bit. There we go. So screenshot that. And while, screenshot while doing that. the polls. While uh, we'll do the polls simultaneously as well. <laughs>